All right, so let's have a word of prayer. It's good to see everybody. Father, we just thank you, God, for the room. We thank you, God, that you inhabit the praises of your people. We thank you, Father, that uh, there is there is none other like you, Father. And so we thank you that because of the worship, you promised to come in and to be with us. And so we honor your presence, and we thank you, Father. Thank you for every house and every uh, house represented. And we thank you that the wind of your spirit now fills the place, Father. Where there are needs, we thank you that you are supplying needs, Father, for you own the hills. And so we look to the hills from which comes our help, our strength, Father. We know it comes from you. We know that the supply is on the hills. And so we put our focus, Father, on the hills today as we see God and as we move from glory to glory, level to level. We thank you that you own the cattle. You own the stuff on a thousand hills. And so uh, we just thank you that you are here and that you are doing all that you do, that you are Jehovah Roy that sees. You are the God that sees and you are seeing us and, and not just seeing, but Father, you are ministering to us even as we minister to you in Jesus' name. Amen. So we've been in Proverbs, and so let's go there real quick. It's not going to be a long message. I just want to be very intentional this morning. And um, I'll do a quick, a quick little review. And it says in Proverbs chapter 3, uh, verse 5. So let me, I know I'm sharing my screen here. I'm going to stop the share for a moment. It says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your path, the ESV says. Which I, 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 just, I just love with the scripture because I think we've been talking about this particular passage, these two verses, and just breaking them down so that we get a greater understanding of uh, the Father's intent in allowing this to be spoken in the scriptures to give us guidance, to give us uh, a direction, to give us hope. For me, it has been the idea of uh, seeing Adam and Eve and the very beginning and the things that have happened there like we were talking about last week when we were talking about understanding and the, we were talking about the tree of good and evil and how, how uh, good and evil has been pretty much the, 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 the number one thing that God never intended for us to experience was good and evil. He never intended us to experience good, let alone evil. He just wanted us to experience him. And so he told them, don't eat of that particular tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But there also is other knowledge. There's the knowledge of Christ, the scripture says. And so um, I think this particular passage in Proverbs is, is more, it's kind of a redemption. You know, after everything has been said and done, now trust in the Lord with all of your heart and don't lean in any direction of your own understanding. It doesn't mean that we don't have understanding. It doesn't mean that we aren't experienced and that we don't use wisdom, but it, it, it does mean that we don't lean on that option. And that can be difficult, especially when we're used to and we're brought up and, and we come out of the womb and we're trained to uh, seek understanding in everything. Yeah. And the scripture, frankly says not that you don't know but look don't lean on what you don't what you think you know you know Paul said there's nothing good in me there's just nothing good in me which is just to say there's nothing good in me I can't trust everything inside of myself as much as it may seem like it's okay to go ahead and trust everything within me. But Paul says, no, there's nothing, there's nothing good in me. And so 
we've gone over trust in the Lord with all your heart. We've gone over uh, and do not lean on your own understanding. Today I want to go over in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. There's a scripture that says he makes the crooked path straight. I love that scripture. But that is that is kind of like to say, if you're in a crooked path and you're going a particular way, he will make that straight. He will straighten it out, which I love because that's what he did with Adam and Eve is that there was a path they went that was crooked and then he ended up straightening it out with redemption through the sun. And so there's nothing wrong with uh, crooked paths being made straight. But then there also is on the other side that when we become so acquainted with him, then he directs our paths so we're not confused or misled or disillusioned into moving into a pathway that we shouldn't. Then he has to make it straight because we went in a crooked area. He always can he always is redeeming us <laughs> which is awesome which is great i feel like i'm being redeemed every day i have crooked thoughts i have crooked ways and he ends up putting me on the path that i should be on none of us are are absent of that i think it's i think it's wonderful i think it's wonderful to experience him making things right that are in a wrong place and he'll do that for any of us and he does so I want to talk about it in all ways, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will straighten or make straight your paths. I think I want to show you a picture. I'm going to share my screen so you can see it. Get that out of the way. Don't sit on your sleep goes in the ditch. I want to see. I want you to see a picture. Now have the fun thing. Hopefully, everybody can see this. So. As you look at this video, you can still hear me, right? Thank you, Martha. Don't rush. Don't over clench. Slightly change position to find home. Be intentional and pure of purpose. Stay aware of your breath and feel how all comes from your center. When you let go, do so cleanly and without regret. These aren't, these aren't words for doing yoga. They may sound like it. It's not a tantra. It, although it could be. But these are actually instructions on how to draw, how to hold, and how to release an arrow from a bow. To be intentional and pure of purpose, to stay aware of your breath and to feel how all comes from your center. And then when you let go, that you do so cleanly and that you do it with without regret. I took a, I took, um, 
archery when I was in school. <laughs> All right, we're learning something new about Derek today. Those are also the same instructions for pulling the trigger. <laughs> what are you saying, Will? Those are also very similar to the same instructions when pulling a trigger on a firearm. Yes, and you need to hold on to that. Don't pull the trigger and regret. <laughs> Never regret. No. <laughs> so I took archery when I was in school, and um, I, I loved it, actually. I, I'm surprised. I used to have a bow, and um, I had a, um, I had the, I don't know the term anymore, but I had the kind with the multiple strings and, uh, you know, the whole thing. So I had a hunter's bow, and I was able to, and it was very difficult to pull back. So I had to get it reset so that it would work for me. And I'd go out and I would shoot and even maybe about 16 years ago, I was probably, I was still shooting a bow actually. Um, yeah. Lo and behold. There is the choosing, there is the fashioning of the equipment when you're dealing with archery. Um, there is the length of the shaft. There's the length of the arrow and all of it has to be correct and or they call that the spine and it and it's all based on the particular bow that you have you just don't pick up any arrow f with any bow you know but each arrow that you have in your quiver is for your bow then secondly the the archer has to really pay attention to their attitude and to their stance. You just don't get out there with the wrong attitude. It's not bad or good, it's just the wrong attitude because you have to be aware of what's going on inside of you so that you can breathe and release and not do the wrong thing, like have regret. Thirdly, besides attitude, besides making sure everything is fitting like it's supposed to, thirdly, is there is this, there is a, a knocking, they call it, on an arrow, not K and O, but N O C K I N G, an arrow, a knocking, an arrow, and a drawing back of the string to the shooting position. And then there's the aiming for the target. So the thing that helps to make you a good archer is always having the same consistency when you are pulling back. It's, all, it's always the same. The draw position is consistent when you're drawing back. It's very consistent. Then finally, the good string release is critical. That's where I messed up at first when I was learning because it's easy to release it and it rubs against your arm. It's because you're not holding the bow correctly and other way and other things. So you, you could hesitate when you're releasing it and it rubs against your fingers. So you have to really be consistent when you are releasing the string. You just don't, you just don't let it go, but you're consistently doing it the right way in order to have a good release. A good release is critical. So then you're always hitting the target and it's always a good thing. So good release is important. I think that we're clearly advised that we should always have and make every effort in our life, in every area of our life to cleanly release things. 
to cleanly let go of things. I think it's a good goal to do our best to practice healthy detachment. And let's add that. Let's, let's say healthy detachment from the result. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or outcome. Or the finish. A, a barched, a botched, barched, a barched, a botched release botched archery release could come from improper grip or poor arm position as I was describing before it could happen from letting out the fingers too slowly or even by clenching the bow too tightly I know we're still talking about Rome, but Proverbs chapter 3 in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. I was thinking about that scripture and I was thinking about the whole archery thing. Had I actually had forgotten that I had done archery for a long time and uh, and I was reminded of it because as I read it in the Passion Translation it says trust in the Lord completely do not rely on your own opinions with all your heart, rely on him to guide you, and he will lead you in every decision you make. And then listen to verse 6. It says, become intimate with him in whatever you do, and he will lead you wherever you go. Become intimately with him in everything that you're doing, and then he leads you in all of the places that we go. With archery, you are be you become very intimately acquainted with your bow and your arrow in order to have the right release to make the right decisions to breathe correctly you have it close you have it in one hand while the other hand pulls back on the string and it is coming to your mouth and your nose it's being directed in all of those ways from your nose and your eye you have to breathe correctly all of these things and then being aware of yourself and your attitude because all of these things going on inside you can hinder or help in your release which is the last thing in order to hit the target and being detached from all of that uh the result at the end of it and so there's there's a lot of there's more than just being acquainted with a bow and arrow. Um, any any movie that you've seen where they use a bow and an arrow, anything that you've seen where they use a bow and arrow, you you don't just buy it off the shelf and then go to using it. You become acquainted with it, and you move from acquaintance to being very intimate with your uh, your your bow and your arrows. So then they work for you the way that they should. This particular scripture is talking very much about the same idea of being directed by God when he says that we become intimate with him in whatever we do. It, it, is, it is the same words uh, when he says the word way. It's actually the word Derek, D-E-R-E-K, which comes from the word uh D-A-R-A-K and when you look at it which I am just because we can it's it, it looks like this it is to tread it is to walk it is to string a bow it says In all your ways, this ways is to string a bow. It is archer. It is the bend. It is the coming. It is the draw. It is the guiding. It is leading. It is going forth. It is the thresh, the tread. It is, it is the walk. So when he says, 
in all your all your ways. He's actually talking about archery in all of your ways. As you're as you're going about life, you're not the archer, you're the arrow. And so you want to be so acquainted with the father in an intimate way so that he's able to put you on the string and then release you in the area, the place, guide you where you need to be. And so it's, it's like if you're not happy with where you're at in life, Maybe, just maybe, you got misdirected. Maybe, maybe we weren't as intimate with the Father as we could have been. Maybe we got shot in another direction. But he makes the crooked paths straight. He helps us to get on the right plane, to get on the right road. Where those little things, because the little things, the scripture says, spoil, right? Yeah. And so that one person said, right, but it's still true. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the little things that in our life that mess us up. It's those little things, little things. It's not so much that we have this big, huge mishap in our life that is causing us to not hit the target. It's, it's usually the little things like, not breathing right when you when we were when we were when we we're being let go not being aware of our attitude mm -hmm. just thinking you know when they when you do uh karate or like like we always talking about it's the same thing when you fire a gun one of the things that they teach you is you know you don't do this in anger because then you let anger be the best of you and get the best of you and you're not really operating at your full faculties because you're allowing an emotion to be the filter for all of your actions and responses which then clouds the correct responses that need to happen and so <clears throat> it's the same with archery if you got things going on inside of you it's difficult to, to settle it's good it's difficult to get to breathing with the right rhythm they say that archery will actually help your heart rate just like running would archery will help your heart rate even though you're not running you're not boxing you're not swimming you're not doing something like that but it is the idea of bringing yourself to a calm place and then releasing what is in your hand. Mm -hmm. When the father says in Proverbs chapter three, trust in the Lord in all of your ways. It's important that we learn to just settle in peace. It's important yeah. that we don't allow ourselves to get frustrated with things going on around us yeah. where we're not able then to focus and be focused in this in this aspect we're talking about i need him to focus me in the right direction so i end up in the right place yeah. so he and i the father and i we have to be so i'm in him and he's in me that he knows he can put me on the string and let me go and that when he does I'm not going to be uncooperative in the moment. I'm not going to be wondering what's going on. I'm not going to be regretting the things. I, but I'm willing to be detached from the result and just say, send me where you need me to be. Yeah. Shoot me where you need me to go. I'm trusting that I'm in your hands. My life is in your hands, as the songwriter said. And I'm and I'm and I'm willing to separate my emotions and everything else from it so that I can have peace in understanding that there are greater things happening for me than maybe what I'm aware of. 
in the moment, but you're, I'm getting ready to hit this target. I'm getting ready to meet the place that I'm supposed to meet. We call it destiny and we call it all kinds of big words and spiritual things, but a target is a destiny and, and, and we have many destinies. Sometimes though we get a little, we, we end up in other areas, not always the bullseye. But I think the father wants to put us in the right place. I think the father wants to, I think he already sees us in the right place. He never sees us on the outside of the target. Of He never sees us on the outside of the bullseye. He always sees us hitting the bullseye. Yeah. It's up to us to relax. It's up to us mm. to breathe, to allow Holy Spirit to be a part of our lives. It's up to us to be acquainted, acquainted with him. Other relationships don't as don't matter the same as this relationship. Mm -hmm. When we're confused, when we're maybe uh, misled, and things aren't going like we want them to go, we find ourselves on a wider road instead of that narrow narrow road. Uh, we all all we really have to do, instead of trying to fix the path, is just fix the relationship. It's not That's fixing true. what our hands can touch or where our feet are at and we try to move ourselves away and get somewhere else and move somewhere. No, he's just saying, you know what? That's what the scripture is saying. I'm gonna read it again. Cause it says in verse six, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. But I wanna read it in the Passion Translation. Become intimate with him in whatever you do. And he will lead you wherever you go. Whatever you do, wherever you go. Both of those are based on his, your intimacy and having a relationship with him. But let's go on. Verse 7 says, don't think for a moment that you know it all. For wisdom comes when you adore him with undivided devotion. That is intimacy with him and avoid everything that's wrong. So I put my focus on him and it becomes undivided. When an archer puts the, the bow, the string, the arrow, the spine, when everything is, is working like it's supposed to be, doesn't matter who's, what's going on around me, I am focused and I'm not losing my focus. I'm not gonna have divided attention or else I won't hit my target. I think the father is the same way. He's never divided. He's all, his eye is on us. He is Jehovah Rohi. He is the <laughs> God that sees. He's not seeing us and seeing other things and it's divided. His eye is on you. But it goes on to say, in everything that's wrong, then it says, then you will find the healing refreshment that your body and spirit long for. Everything that we desire, everything that we are wanting, that's what he's saying right here. That we find it. And we, you understand what it is to be refreshed, which is to first be dry and then suddenly you drink something and it's like you feel the coolness go down your throat and your chest and into your belly and you're like man that felt really good to drink that cold water that's re being refreshed you know being refreshed is you're super hot and you get into an air conditioner and you just sit down and it's like ah that's nice being refreshed is going out and for me and in, in getting in the water and you know enjoying the water on a hot day that can be super refreshing so we, we understand refreshment and so he says that we get healing and refreshment when we get ourselves in place contrary to that is that we don't have healing and refreshment when we're out of pocket when we're out of place when we're trying to you can't be your own arrow you can't you can't <laughs> you fit his bow. Yeah. Amen. 
don't don't try to change yourself don't try to fix yourself just allow him to do what he does because you already fit his bow all you have to do is acknowledge him in all of your ways in everything so, so in everything i love that verse verse 7 says don't think for a moment that you know it all for wisdom comes when you adore him with undivided devotion i'm going to end with this because we under we we all remember the story of daniel and shadrach meshach and abednego and, and they were taken from one group of people that they were that was their people that was their family that was their nation and they were taken from those people and then they were put into another land another nation a whole nother group of people and what's interesting is as they were shot to another place not just taken they kept acknowledging the father they kept acknowledging him in all of their ways and so whether it's Daniel ending up in a lion's den because he acknowledged God, whether it's Shadrach, Meshach, and, a, and Abednego ending up in a fiery furnace because they acknowledge God, whether it's uh, uh, Daniel dealing with uh, the other governors <coughs> and every other high up person and because they saw the favor of God on him and the favor with the king and here he is praying you know, with an open window when he should be you know, honoring uh, some statue that the king had put together. And we see even in all of that, because he honored God, God kept doing for him and putting him in the right places. Yeah. The right place was a furnace because they came out. They didn't stay in the furnace. They went through it. The right place was the lion's den because he came out. Sometimes we think that just because we end up in a place, that's the end all. But that is where we detach ourselves from the result, realizing this is not the end. The lion's den is not the end. The fiery furnace is not the end. That's just the place that I'm detaching myself from because I'm acknowledging God in all my ways so he can continue to direct my path. He's going to shoot me out of the lion's den. He's going to shoot me out of the fiery furnace. He's going to shoot me out of the trouble that I am in and bring me to the place that he already sees me in and not just bring me, but shoot me in that direction. So I don't need to be frustrated, frustrated, frustrated thinking that he doesn't see me because he does. But sometimes when we think that he doesn't and he's not aware, he doesn't know how bad it is. He doesn't know what I'm dealing with. He doesn't know the people that are around me. He doesn't know my situation. My situation is quite different than everyone. He doesn't know what's going on in my body. He doesn't know what's going on in my head. He doesn't know what's going on in my family. But that's why we stay really intimately acquainted with him. Because then we realize, oh, he does know. Yes, he does. He's, he's, he is super aware of me. Yes. And yes. he is so aware that he is taking care of all my derricks, all my ways. <laughs> <laughs> he's taking care of all of that and making sure that I hit the target. So, as I finish, I think that um, if you look back on your life, like I've been looking back on mine in the last 24 hours thinking about this word, I was thinking some of the places I end up are good places. Some of the places I end up are not great places, you know, in the lion's den. I've been in the lion's den before. You know, I'm sure you have too, probably, you know, not physical lions, but people that will just tear you apart, you know? And, um, and so we can end up in really 
the good, the bad, ugly places. But I have found that he's always there. Yeah. Right? He's always in each of those places. Mm -hmm. As long as I don't get stuck and realize I'm still in motion. Yeah. Towards the target. Jo Joseph is, is a good example, because I love Joseph, of seeing someone who is shot like an arrow. Just because he transitions from family into a pit doesn't mean the arrow isn't moving it just means at this point he's in a pit but he's still moving the next place is to a palace don't get flustered don't get all broken up don't be so attached to the result that you're unable to trust. Because that's what it's all about. Is making sure nothing gets in the way of trusting him. Yeah. Yeah. And everything tries, you know. Mm -hmm. The wind, the rain, <laughs> everything will try to get in the way of trusting. Yeah. Trusting is the first thing and trusting is the last thing. And so that's why he tells us how to trust so that we keep moving and allowing the movement of our life without us trying to, you know, I think the wind needs to change and blow me in this direction, or I think this needs to happen. Or I'm pretty sure that if God saw, he would make sure that I went this direction. Change my direction, God. Change my destiny. Is this what you called me to? You didn't, you know, he is completely aware, guys, and and making sure that we get to the place that he has already designed for us. We won't be in the 10 mark. We won't be in the 20 mark and the 30 mark on the target. We're going to hit the bullseye. Yeah. I believe that. Yeah. I believe that. Or he wouldn't be God. That's, that's his desire as he delights in us. That we would delight in him. So then he can make every place straight. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Father, we thank you, God. We ask you right now to forgive us for trying to uh, be the archer when we're the arrow. Yeah. Forgive us, Father, for uh, uh, trying to direct our lives. And God, we know we're supposed to trust you. We've known we're supposed to trust you. And yet we've sometimes thought you didn't see. And so we tried to do the necessary things that we thought needed to be done so you could see us and so that you could move us in the direction we needed to be in. But Father, the whole while you've been in control. And so we release ourselves of control, yeah. of this spirit of control and trying to manipulate you in scripture, trying to manipulate you with doing and speaking certain things, trying to manipulate you. Father, we ask forgiveness, God, because you know what you're doing. Completely, you know what you're doing. And so we trust you as Father. We trust you as Abba. And not like anyone else, Father, we want to be so acquainted and intimate with you that you can trust us. That you can trust us not to do a change up in the midst of flight, not to be trying to do something else, think some other kind of way. Father, you can trust us to be what you designed us to be in Jesus' name. We forgive ourselves for how we've moved, for what we've done, for the things that we've uh, uh, thought while we were in flight. Even when we landed in the things that we said and cursing our own crisis, Father, uh, we forgive ourselves. And we thank you that you forgive us. And we just thank you, Father, for showing us and giving us greater understanding. With everything that we know, we don't rely on the things that we know. We rely on your hand to have us in Jesus' name. Both hands are dealing with this. And so we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.